Hi, so let us start of understanding what is a problem and what are the different ways of solving a problem. Okay. We need to first define what is a problem. A problem has no proper definition in cognitive psychology. So we'll define a problem in such a way. A problem can be defined as a task which is self-assigned or assigned by the environment on an individual. In cognitive psychology, a problem is just a task which is to be performed by an individual. Before moving on to solving the problems, let us understand which are different type of problems. There are two different type of problems which are categorized. The first one is a well-defined problem, but the second is not a well-defined problem. Now, what is a well-defined problem? Consider a simple example. 1 plus 3 is equal to what? In this particular problem, we know the exact solution of the problem. This problem has exact solution. Whereas, look at the second example. I need a job. Well, this problem depends upon various factors which are internal as well as external. Our expectations from the job, which kind of qualifications do we have. So, this problem is not clearly defined. We need to go into it, go into the depth and understand the meaning of this problem and then we are able to solve it. So, there are two basic type of problems. One is well defined but the one is not a well defined problem. Now, let us look at some mental process the people go through before moving on to problem solving or before moving on to different methods of problem solving. The different mental processes involve recognizing a problem, second, representing a problem in the memory, third, collecting relevant information about the problem, fourth, understanding different aspects of the problem and fifth is describing the problem completely. Now, once you have completed these five steps, we can move on to the different techniques which are used to solve the problem. Now, let us understand these five processes first. The first, recognizing a problem. Uh, we'll take a simple example. You can say a, a simple example of recognizing a problem is we need a job. That's our problem or that's our task. The second step of representing the problem in the memory means we need to understand what is the necessity of the problem. Why do we need that job? There's a thin line of difference between these two steps. Moving on to the third step, gathering relevant information about the problem. Now, once we have identified the necessary, we can now collect different information about the, job, about the problem which we have. We can collect the information about the qualifications or the required salary and based on that we can go on to finding the job. The next step is identifying different aspects of the problem. Now in this step we can move on to identifying the different areas which we can work effectively. What are our areas of interest? If, because if you don't work on your area of interest it will be very difficult to be succeed and it is very difficult to succeed in a job. And finally labeling and describing a problem. Finally, after moving on to all this process, we finally decide what kind of job we want. We need a job of an electrician or we need a job of an MBA person or a managerial job depending upon what salary we need. So the last step is the main step which can be used to solve problem by various techniques. Now, once we have done with this, we can now move on to solving problems. We have four different techniques to solve the problems. The first is the algorithms. Second is the heuristics. The third is trial and error. And the last is insights. Now, the algorithm. The algorithm technique of solving the problem is basically much more scientific. A step-by-step -step way which guarantees an answer. For example, if there is a number lock which we need to open it, we don't know the exact number. So what we do is, we try different combination. In algorithm, what we will do is, we will find out numbers from 0, the combination is 0, 0 and we will go on increasing the number from 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3 till 99. 
and finally the log gets open. One of the combination is right and the log gets open. Right? So this is an algorithm technique. Now algorithm techniques does guarantee the answer perfectly, but it sometimes may take huge amount of time. If you have three rings in the number log, it will take we have to assume thousand numbers to get different combination, one combination which is right. So the second technique is much more easier than this. But the second technique does not guarantee the answer. It's heuristics. Heuristics means suppose I know which person owned this law. So what I'll do is I'll try out different combinations such as his birth date, 10th of March. I try 10th, I'll try 04. So this is a heuristic technique. I have to go on to the mental process and think about what could be the possible combinations. I don't have to try out all the combinations which the algorithm does. Now this technique, I could get an answer, I could not get an answer. So this technique does not guarantee an answer. But if I get an answer, it will be much quicker than the algorithm. The next technique, which is trial and error. Well, the trial and error technique, again, is more like heuristic. But in this, we need to guess the answers. I can randomly guess an answer 56 in the number log. If it opens, no. If it doesn't open, I'll strike that out. Next number, I'll try it out. So this is a trial and error technique. I have to try out different numbers randomly. Now, trial and error technique is much more useful only when we have limited number of options. For example, consider this question. Now, the such type of questions are answered in MCQs in various entrance exams. Now, instead of solving the problem, I can try out one of one by one combinations. I can try out A, B, C. If none of these works, D will be the answer. So this is a trial and error technique which can be used in some cases. The last is the insights. Insights basically deals with the problems which we have already solved or a type of problems which we have already solved. Suppose we have a type of problem which is this and based on this there is another question. So based on the experience which I had on this question I can assume the answer for this one is good. So this is insights. So these were the different methods of solving the problems.